Let's go to the main menu and click Guides. Then in the search box at the top, type in Exegetical. Locate in the menu Guides and click Exegetical Guide. Now the Exegetical Guide needs a Bible cross-reference. Let's go ahead and put in John 1.1. 1, 1. Notice, like other scripture references, we get a list of choices below. Let's choose the first option. Now, the exegetical guide is the staple, the foundation for doing your word study work, your original language work. Now, the first thing you want to do is right-click on the first section you see and choose Collapse All. The reason we do this is to keep Logos from running too many things at once and slowing down our computer. So now that all sections are collapsed, we can click on each one and take a view of each section. So let's click and expand textual variants. This is a very powerful feature in Logos, and I can't stress how important it is. However, it does require some resources and requires some expertise. Now, the first thing you're going to see is textual commentaries. If this passage had a uh, issue in the textual apparatus, then the textual commentaries would tell us. Now, this particular passage, there isn't any, so we're not seeing any there. An apparatus is a device, let me click and open, that will help you understand where there is some questions on the copies. What you may not realize is that the Bible that we have today is a translation from the various copies of manuscripts we have. And some of those copies do differ from one another. And through textual criticism, that is the study and analysis of these differences, we can determine what we believe the original author wrote since we don't have those original autographs anymore. So an apparatus is going to tell you what are the differences in some of the copies. Very important. But as you can see, it's a lot of technical information. You have to understand this kind of information. Let's go ahead and click Editions. This will give you a list of all your Greek Bibles so you can compare one translation to the next. This is really important when it comes to comparing, let's say, the King James Version versus let's say the New American Standard. There's different textual families behind those. The King James comes from copies that are called the majority text, where we have the majority of copies as well as more recent or newer copies, where the New American Standard and other translations similar to that are based on older copies, but we have fewer of those. Those are also called Alexandrian. And so these are going to differ on the underlying Greek words. So be aware of the additions and how that can make a huge impact in the translation. Then we have transcriptions, and these are individual copies of some specific copies. What do I mean by that? So, for example, here we have P66. This is a digitized book from the original copy of the P66, which only includes a handful of Bible passages. In fact, the P66 has John chapters 1 through 21. That's all it's included on this particular papyrus, P for papyrus. So this can be really helpful if you want to go back to the original copy and see how it's different from your original Bible text. Then we have ancient versions. These are translations of a particular Old Testament or New Testament book. And this can be very insightful and help you understand what they thought a text meant in the original Hebrew and Greek based on the translation in their own language. Then we have online manuscripts, which links you to copies that you can see online. This can be really fun and interesting. As you can see here, we have all these images. Here is the P66 Chester Beatty. So you saw the digital copy here at the right. Well, this is what the original one looks like. And again, it's lots of fun to look at this. All right, so that's textual variance. And again, it's focusing on the text and what it is. Then we move to grammars where Logos is going to search your grammar books for your passage. And if there is any sections in the grammar that mention your passage, you're going to get those back in the search results. Now, currently we're in the subject view. So this is organizing the information. So if we want to look at our passage from an etymology, that is word standpoint, we'd look at that or morphology or syntax. If we click on resource, then we have it broken down by language. We click and expand Greek. And now we can see all those dictionaries. If we expand the Greek dictionary, we can see our passage cited in various sections in that book. Wonderful way to search for your passage for grammatical insights straight from the grammar. Now, grammatical constructions is really helpful in identifying significant grammatical constructions. 
It also includes other things like uh, clause level insights and so forth. But here in John 1, 1, we have Colwell's rule. And if you float your mouse over it, Logos tells you what the rule is. Very important when it deals with some articles in the text. And that's going to be very important. It identifies prepositional phrases and so forth. So again, this is moving you along the lines of grammar, but really focusing on construction. Visualization will give you a link to the various syntactical diagrams, as well as clausal diagrams and sentence diagrams. Very helpful in letting you see what the text looks like visually. A new resource that's been recently added at the time of this video is the SBL Greek New Testament sentence diagrams from Randy Leedy. You can see I've clicked and opened up that resource. And so the whole New Testament has been grammatically diagrammed. But you have to know Greek to be able to use it. All right, interactives. In this case, there's none that are here appropriate to this passage. Lemma in a passage, we've seen this before. This is going to look for your Greek word in a particular commentary. Now, this is interesting because this is lemmas in John 1.1. 1, 1, and if we expand the word, you can see now the various commentaries listed there below. So that's a great way to do more word studies based on what commentaries have and the insights they have. Important words is a great tool. Again, it's going to give you the information, how the word is used, and so forth. This also covers every word in the verse. You can see logos, theos, arche, amy, and pros. So very, very important there. Interesting words is going to give you some visualizations here. There's the Greek version of it. Here's the English word of it. And again, we're only looking at one verse, so this little tree that it's making is not going to be very interesting. And the last section, and probably the most important section of the exegetical guide, is the word by word. Now, at the left, we have John 1, 1 in Greek, and at the right, we have it in English. If we click the drop-down menu right here, we can change the interlinear that we want to use. So if I wanted to change this to the NASB, I can, I can simply select that as I've done, and now we got the Greek and the English at the right. Then below that, we have the manuscript. Highlighted in bold is the word we're looking at. That's very important to know which word you're looking at. Then we have the lemma form, a speaker to pronounce it, the transliteration, so you can see that those letters spelled on English, a glossary, which is simply an equivalent English word to this. Now, what I like about the exegetical guide is the morphological information. And when you float your mouse, you get an instant definition. This will keep you sharp in making sure you understand the technical morphological details. The sense is provided. If you click on that, the sense lexicon will open up and you can understand where it fits in the sense lexicon. And then underneath that are all the links to the lexicon. So if we click on DBL Greek, we can see our definition there. Very powerful. One other thing to keep in mind now, Logos jumped right away to this word was. It didn't look up every single word. And that's because I had set it up this way. To fix that, if you flow your mouse over word by word and click on settings, you can see that I have show all words include only these parts of speech, the verb. So that's why we're only seeing verbs. You can check and uncheck these per your preference to determine what you want to look at. My advice in using this report is to close all sections except the word by word. And then what you can do is link it to your Bible. So let me close all these resources. Let me open up my New King James. I'm going to go over to the stoplight menu, the three vertical dots, click link, set A, and repeat that process with the exegetical guide. With the exegetical guide, link set A. Now they're all linked, and so should I go to John 1, 2 in my Bible, the exegetical guide reruns with now verse 2. This is a great report, and it really is the best way to do word studies. Let's go ahead and click on the X to close both these resources on their tabs.